Gentlemen, uh, welcome back. Sorry, uh, we had to get a, another computer in. Uh, iRacing decided to kick Larry out and not let him back in. Uh, so we're back up and running. We got Riley Thompson still holding off the lead. Thomas Bressy is running right behind him about three seconds back. They've kind of stayed the same throughout this whole entire time. They've been running one and two. Blake Gordon and Justin Morton have been swapping positions back between third and fourth right now. Just Justin Morton, though, is in fourth place. Blake Gordon's in third place. Eric Wineland is in fifth place. Uh, we got uh, quite a few people have already left due to damages. We got quite a few people already, a lap, quite a few laps down. Uh, but we're about 35 minutes remaining. We've done uh, quite, a, quite a few laps. We're on lap number 12 right now. As we watch the leader go through the corners here. Yeah, and we're just a little over half, or excuse me, just under halfway to go. So 35 minutes still to go here tonight. As you stated, Riley Thompson really on rails. Got that five-second gap to Thomas Bressy. He's got a really strong run, but I don't know if Thomas has anything for Riley. It looks like he's uh, still about a second off the pace there. Yeah, I mean, these guys have been running hard. Riley Thompson, I've been watching this whole entire time while we've had these uh, technical difficulties, but we've... Uh, been going strong here and uh he he has not made a mistake thomas bressy uh he's made just one or two to just kind of put him a little bit further back and uh you know justin morton and blake gordon has been having a hell of a battle there uh but now uh you know they're still right on top of each other oh, they're probably one of the best battles right now until you go back to fourth and fifth they're they're running very close to each other as well Yeah, so you see Blake Gordon, he's trying to put a you know, strong run here to catch Justin Morton, who is sitting in third. That gap right now, about 1.7 seconds just in front of Blake is uh, Justin. Yeah, he just got by him there on the last lap, and uh, uh, they're about six seconds off of second place. So, I mean, they're going to have to you know, stop battling each other and start battling the track and uh, to catch up to the second and first place guys they gotta, gotta be able to you know knock the you know uh, fall in line and just try to drive as hard as they can to get up to the front the more battling side by side you're doing just the you know more time you're losing ground to the leaders and you have a good battle back here heating up between michael stroll and ninth we got braxton deweese here in 10th and sean carmody in 11th right now that gap between Michael Stroll and uh, Sean Carmody from, uh, so from 9th to 11th. It's only about two and a half seconds with Braxton DeWeese pretty much splitting those guys with that one, one and a half second gap uh, front and back. Yeah, Michael Stroll, you know, he puts on a great race every single week. Uh, you know, last week he get, he, he was uh, gracious enough to get a caution right there near the end. Uh, I, I He says he was good. I'm, I'm still questionable about it. I think he was maybe one or two laps short, but he said he was good. But uh, we'll never know. We didn't. We'll never see how that one ended up. He got a good caution. Either way, uh, he was able to pit along with everybody else and come back with a really great finish. No. Continue on. Yeah. Just kind of looking through the field here. This is a Hayden Pastoris in 15th. Just behind him, Brad Slaughter. The gap there is Brad Slaughter goes sliding into the corner there. He's going to smack the wall. And that's going to put a lot of front left damage on him. Yeah, that gap there was only about a half a second to that incident. Yeah, I'm afraid of that right there. Yeah, he's going on straight in the pit. He might have got a meatball flag for that one. Or, uh, you know, he gets black flag for if he does not pit because that so much heavy damage right there. I mean, we saw he lost his hood there in that accident. But. Yeah, Brian Kidda here. He's running 19. JJ Odell putting a strong run as he is on his way up. He's up four spots currently, and he's going to look to try to pass uh, Brian Kidda, who's up 10 spots. But the gap there between these two only about, about a half a second. And then not anymore. Brian Kidda makes a little bit of a mistake. JJ Odell goes to the inside, and he'll pass him there coming down the straight. This is a great battle. I mean, you know, any little tiny oh, mistake. Oh, JJ Odell off the track. Ooh, yeah. Any little mistake, uh, people are right there to pounce on you. You're driving out of your mirror, which, you know, sometimes is, you know, a downfall because 
you're worried about what the guy behind you is going to do, and then you take your eyes off in front of you, and uh, you make that one little mistake, and then they all she wrote, and then, you know, sometimes mistakes compound each other on road courses, and you just continue making them. Kind of hard to, uh, you know, rebound from that. And there we just take a quick look there. That is uh, Boomer Logan. He uh, got a little sideways there trying to get into that corner. Well, he's going into it just a little bit hot. Hit the brakes, locks the brakes up, and goes sliding around. Yeah, there's great action all throughout this racetrack right now. But uh, I want to point out right now, uh, the top four all have, were running very similar times. They're all running their last lap were uh, in the 214s. So they're all running pretty good around the same pace right now. So it's going to be hard for anybody to really capitalize. And you start pushing back in the field, there are some people are running about one to two seconds off the what the top three to four is running right now. Uh, they're running about two sixteen, uh, two minutes sixteen seconds uh, to two minutes eighteen seconds. It's kind of what the average time is for the top twenty, and then from there it kind of drops off to about two twenty, two twenty two. Yeah, Justin Morton there in third on that last lap, as you just stated. 214.05 as opposed to a 214.63 of Riley Thompson. Now, we didn't see it. That could be uh, maybe lap track or something playing into part there. But Riley Thompson, he'd been pretty consistent around there in the 214s. But Justin Morton really putting on a strong run here, even with that back end damage that he sustained. Yeah. You know, aerodynamics is, isn't is a key here. I mean, you have a few little long straights, but not enough where, you know, is going to constantly just hurt them like a you know oval track would be here with these Xfinity cars. So having some beat up a little bit damage here and there is uh isn't going to be that bad. It's you know just making sure you don't have any suspension damage while you're out there. So it looks like he, you know lap times he's putting down he definitely doesn't have any suspension suspension damage. Yeah, that's the, that's the key there. Is just how much damage does that car actually sustain? And as you stated, uh, he's doesn't doesn't appear that he's having any issues controlling that car handling that car so he's definitely riding that out you're, you're as you say top three right there in that 214s after that went to the 216 alan elwood 215 and uh tyler hensley with a 215 back in sixth and yeah, these guys are you know are put on a show here and i, I thought you know we we're gonna have some uh you know spreading out you know whenever it came down to you know we're about a little over halfway through but there's some really good battles throughout the field i mean these guys are having to soon here to be making a pit stop uh so we're going to watch that to see how all you know pit stops play out with these guys and some of these guys have already taken their pit stop right i mean it you know if you've had these little incidents early you're able to get into the pits earlier than everybody else it's not really planned not ideal especially with no cautions yeah you got alan elwood right now and he's uh i mean he's pretty far back in fifth right now he's kind of out there by himself uh but he put down uh, one of the fastest laps on the last one so you know he's looking to come up and try to do it he had some earlier mistakes there at the beginning he got spun around there in between turn one and two and uh so which you know checked up and got a lot of people in the field damaged i know i've already spoken to one of the guys uh, uh joe densmore he was already out due to engine damage and there's quite other people who've already you know have already had to exit the race due to heavy damage on the cars from early early on incidents and, and correct me if i'm wrong no fast repairs in this league no fast repairs it's one and done you you start with what you have and that's all you get taking a look here this is the number two cabin calvin florsky coming through the corner here just gets loose and uh he's going to slide into those tires and gets it back you know backed up pretty quick and go i don't know if he's seen he's sustained enough damage that's going to cause too much uh, issue for him but yeah when you, when you talk about no fast repairs especially at a road course and we kind of like we were talking about in the pre-race you definitely wanted to make sure you try to keep your car clean no fast repairs means if you sustain the damage in the time your race is done yeah you know you know some people stay in the server trying to get the car repaired to see if their engine or whatever they you know 
their modifications needed. Sometimes it takes 30, 40 minutes. And, you know, you go out there, like, we got a, quite a few people that, you know, are, are close to being around the same laps down. So you go out there, run one to two, three, maybe laps, you'll pick up one or two spots. And, I mean, those points could matter near the end of the season. So, you know, every spot counts here when you're in a 40 car, or, you know, race like we are here tonight. Well, here comes Alan Elwood. He's heading down pit road. I wanted to go in, I wanted to highlight him for a second. Our biggest mover of the race, he's up 31 positions to fifth. Some other big movers there, Shane Theron, 25 spots up to ninth. And Tyler Hensley, he's up 21 spots into sixth. Yeah, I, I, I was looking at uh, Shane's, uh, his uh, paint for this week. It looks fantastic. Ooh, I love the uh, graphic there. works. Yeah, it does look uh, great. I know uh, first week when we were at Daytona, he, was ha he had an issue of loading up the wrong paint or the spec map didn't uh, uh, properly load up. But this week, his paint is on point. So as these guys start to funnel into the pits, it would be intriguing to see when does Riley Thompson come in. I, I don't think that anybody the gap right now is 10 seconds back to second with Thomas Bressy. So I don't think you're going to really be able to see an undercut. But... It's kind of one of the things. Even when you pit, you're going to be on cold tires. Anything can happen. Yeah, you're going to have to see, you know, uh, their fast laps, like, you know, Riley Thompson's fast lap was a 10.503, and he's running, his last lap was a 2.14 flat, basically. So, I mean, you're you're looking at, you know, four-second lap difference, at least for the race leader. Like, Alan Elwood's fastest lap was a, just a 2.13, and then, he was running about 2.14, so he he was one second off the pace, but after running all these laps, maybe he's learned, you know, you know, he's got quite a few more laps underneath his belt here of experience. Maybe he's learned a little bit better and can drop it down to 2.11, 2.10, like uh, Riley Thompson is, and kind of, you know, use these fresh tires to his advantage. Uh, we were watching the battle there for second. Thomas Bressy had Justin Morton all over him. But Thomas Bressy decides to come into the pits. Justin Morton stays out. He'll grab that second spot. Oh, as we're seeing people come in, so you know they got to be getting close to their pit window right now. So, you know, Justin Morton and Riley Thompson, I, they're probably going to come in either next lap or at least the next two to three laps. I, you know, you can't extend it out too much further when you're within that pit zone. Uh, you know, we're, we're over the halfway mark, so anything you're doing right now is you know overkill so if it was me i would come in i would get those four fresh set of tires because no matter what you know you've already spent over 50 percent of the race on the current set and you probably exhausted a lot of the tire that you didn't want to and learn what not to do in the first 50 percent of this race what and you're going to see like i said before you're not going to really see an undercut of possibility uh, there on the leader, but you could see it in those positions back with Justin Morton and Thomas Bressy. This is going to put Justin Morton at a disadvantage, right? He's going to be on older tires. Thomas Bressy will be on newer tires. He's going to run some faster laps, so I think I would think that Justin Morton's probably going to want to come in sooner rather than later. Exactly. Uh, you know, right now uh, their best lap times are almost identical. They're both uh, uh, Justin Morton ran a uh, two eleven five and. Thomas Bressy ran a 211 flat almost. So, you know, compared to the 214 lap times that they were running, you know, that's a huge difference whenever it comes back on track. Two seconds on a road course is monumental. Yeah, absolutely on board with the number 56, Riley Thompson. As you get to see the way he works here a little bit as he's coming through the corner. I believe we are going to see him pit here. I, if I would think, as yeah, he's definitely running that low corners. Here he comes. Yep. He's coming into the pits. That was a smooth entrance. I mean, he it really was. Just barely cleared that uh, commitment cone right there. I was able to get in there. I mean, carrying as much speed as he can until we had to get in that braking zone. And here comes number eleven now, Justin Morton. So, as we stated, coming in super quick, super early. Well, it, not super early, but it, on that next lap. I want to see, you know, look at whenever they come back around, if uh, number 24 of Thomas Bressy, if he, you know, stay flawless throughout this whole pitch stop, how much time is he going to uh, gain on that one extra lap? 
Well, right now, your leader, Riley Thompson, he is out of the pit. Thomas Bressy now on that front straight. So he should get second position back here fairly easy. He's now back into second. And the gap right now is shrinking rapidly. It's about eight and a half seconds, though. Yeah, so that's about two seconds, like we were, you know, guesstimating here. Uh, they, they were about 10, 10 and a half seconds right as he was pulling the pit road. So, you know, that's, uh, you know, he gained two seconds right there. And uh, his tires are warmer. He was able to, he's probably able to push a little bit harder than uh, Riley Thompson is right now on these colder tires. He's trying to get them warmed up right now. He rounds this wonderful corner going through the bend and the S's here. Bressy is, I mean, Riley Thompson's coming up on some lap traffic right now. And coming up on the 33. Uh, Jonathan Gervon. He goes to the inside of him. He's going to be able to clear him easily right here going to this bend he's going to loop it wide right here use all of the apron as he comes down come around the final corner here This is Stu Rickard and I'm part of RPM Missions and our cause is to raise awareness for human trafficking here in the United States where currently we have over 300,000 people trapped in slavery and of that at least 30% are of little boys and girls under the age of 18. Our goal at RPM Missions is threefold. We would like to see 10,000 people put this human trafficking hotline number into their cell phones so that they can feel deputized and to report suspicious activities when they see it. Our second goal is to raise awareness for more recovery homes that need to be built for these girls and boys that have been rescued from sex trafficking. And the third goal is for folks sitting on the couch, maybe watching this video, to get up and to uh, get energized, to uh, serve others, and to uh, feel the blessing that comes with that. Thank you so much for uh, listening to this video. And thank you so much for visiting our website. And we ask that maybe for your social media circles, you'll help us spread that word. You'll help us stop the bad guys from exploiting our children sexually, mentally, and physically. Thank you.
Can we be serious for a second? Are you tired of being a loser? Can't do anything right? Feel like everyone's coming down on you all the time? Well, there's a way out. And I'm gonna show you. Hey mom, look what I learned. That's right, pick up a guitar, learn how to play guitar. Automatically, you're gonna become a chick magnet. The ladies are gonna love you. Your kids are gonna think you're cool. So what you need to do is come down here to the guitar at 1672 and a half Ridgewood Avenue in Daytona Beach, Florida, or go to guitar.com and buy yourself a guitar and automatically be the star of your neighborhood. That's guitaraddict.com. All right, gentlemen, we are back live here at Sebring. All right. With one. Uh, so, Josh, uh, how, how was the race? You, you can tell us and walk us through you know what? what's Give going me on. Give two seconds, because I did forget one massive thing here. Sound. Sorry for the scramble. That's better. That's closer to what we were looking for. Well, right now, the track is hot, it's slick, and needless to say, Sebring is a track that is meant for cars with downforce. No way around yeah, that. <laughs> yeah, we're seeing a lot of people struggle through here. The rear tires do not want to grip whatsoever, and the hot temperature in the track does not bode well for that and with the car with zero down force basically for these tracks no it is definitely troublesome and it looks like my computer is not enjoying you're welcome this I'm staying right and i forgot to turn off uh the race chat it's real helpful if i remember to do all this stuff before joining and also, for some reason, the stream is not enjoying this. I'm thinking that there actually is a bit of an issue with OBS tonight, gentlemen. So I am actually sitting here scrambling, trying to find a good way to get this back up and running correctly. And looks like slowly we're creeping up, but... No, this is troublesome. Ah, that's what the problem is. OneDrive's trying to upload stuff. OneDrive doesn't need to be uploading stuff right now. And gentlemen, we're back. So we got Riley Thompson still out there. He's got about a 12-second gap over Thomas Bressy. Justin Bortonson in third. Blake Gordon's in fourth. Fifth is Alan Elwood. Sixth is Eric Wyland. Seventh is Tyler Hensley. Eighth is Gael Brooks. Ninth is Randy Bachel. Tenth is Michael Stroll. Eleventh is Sean Carmody. Eleventh is Braxton DeWeese. Twelfth is Casey Shu. Thirteenth is Shane Theron. Fourteenth is Hayden Pastorius. Fifteenth uh, is Brian Keita. Sixteenth is Danny Ware. Seventeenth is Brad Slaughter Jr. Kyle Cooper. JJ Odell and Brandon Hart, Bernhardt round out your top 20. That's where all your favorite drivers are. Right now we're having about 18 people on the lead lap. We have 11 minutes and 45 seconds left here in this race. That gives us roughly uh, just over five laps or so uh, here at Sebring International Raceway. Uh, I, I got Josh last and he just wanted to join us up here in the booth here tonight. He was out there on the track. He is now here with us in the booth. Uh, so talk us through these corners, man. Let's look at Riley Thompson. He's been putting on the clinic up here. So I will be the first to tell you today was the first time I have ever driven Sebring. 
So this is not, I am not the one to be telling you how to drive this track. However, the turn that we just had Riley come out of, it doesn't quite make sense that you get to go off track there. It's something that Formula One would frown upon because you're way exceeding the track limits. But if you swing out wide, you get a great run down this stretch coming into the last set of turns. And apparently I was running that turn horribly wrong. <laughs> and you take it wide, don't hug the turn as we do see a few people sliding out of that turn. And the first turn, this is all on concrete while most of the rest of the track is asphalt. And those transitions between the different surfaces are actually very, very difficult to maneuver. And turn two there is actually lined there with the concrete as are the inside of this entire section. And it's difficult to keep traction and this stretch of road the this it's off camber to where the call, the banking actually goes to the outside of the turn and it's very difficult to go full throttle through that entire section as we see one of the lap cars being a gentleman and that's a really difficult place to let someone buy and be able to keep your position i'm just gonna stick with whoever picked Ooh. sebring they are a masochist. <laughs> oh man, these guys, I mean, these guys are having a handful all night long. We're seeing cars, I mean, uh, Riley Thompson, we just saw him just a second ago. I mean, his rear end just got wicked loose. He's trying to put the power down. I mean, it, the track is still so hot, so slick. And I mean, you just have to, you, you gotta treat the throttle with the eggshell. Like, I mean, you gotta be very smooth here. Uh, there's no light switch that's what you know that's what i call it like uh, a lot of times where people go from no pressure on the gas pedal to a hundred percent it's like you're flipping a light switch on you can't do that here i mean you have to be very gentle like there's an egg underneath that you don't want to crush it you're just gently massaging it and you hit it perfectly and the biggest issue with these cars on this track is as we're sitting here watching Riley Thompson come into this turn, you're braking until about the point he's at now. And these cars with zero downforce, it's difficult to keep that car stable under braking while turning. Yeah, it, and like, just, like, just like your gas pedal on the eggshells, you gotta do that with your brakes. You can't lock them up. You can't put too much. If you put too much uh, brake into it, depending on what your brake bias is set, your car is not going to really turn, so you, it's one of those, uh, you know, give or take, you know, are you, do you have too much speed you're going to brake? Well, okay, you put too much brake in it, you're not going to be able to turn the way you you want this car to turn because you you got too much brake into it. So, you know, you know, it's one of those fine balances you got to run into. And you just said it, it's a balancing act. This is one of the first tracks in a long time that I actually found speed adjusting my brake bias throughout the course of the track to where the first section, you're flinging that car around so you can move it a little farther forward. Taking up some of your front tires grip isn't gonna be the worst thing because it gets the nose down a lot better. And there's a lot of tight turns and these cars are meant for sweeping turns. So you have to try to get these corners as wide as you possibly can to be able to hold speed. And then once you hit the second half of the course, you're going to see a lot more big braking areas. And it's beneficial to be able to move those, your brake bias a little farther back get a little bit more of your braking power from the rear. But again, there's a lot of turns that you're braking while turning. So it's it's a dangerous, dangerous thing that you need to do, but it's it's necessary. I mean, uh, you know, get that, that repetition down of, you know, both braking and holding that gas pedal down, you know, trying to accelerate off at the same time, you know, it, it, it's an art and, uh, you know, if you don't have it to where you can work the brake and the throttle at the same time to help maneuver the car around, you're, it's going to show in your lap times. You're going to be able to, going to be able to have to, you know, balance that 
uh, of having not too much speed, not you know, not enough brakes. Uh, it's a lot, of, a lot of things you have to consider, all while looking out the front windshield and also looking behind you to make sure uh, the person behind you is not trying to outbreak you, which throws you off your rhythm. Well, and that that is something that unfortunately we saw towards the beginning of the race, to where there was chaos is the best way to do it and everybody's breaking points and how everyone treats this track is going to be different because some people are going to be more confident on their brakes listening for the lockup because we're in a sim you can't use your good old-fashioned butt dyno to feel when those brakes are locking up and if there's a lot of chaos around you there's a chance that you'll miss those audio cues there's just again people are going to have their brake bias set at different places so they'll be able to sh stop in a shorter distance but at the end of the day anytime you have that many cars together it it's going to turn into a little bit of trouble yeah i'm looking here at riley thompson uh as we're focusing on him uh his last lap time was a 212 759 Thomas Bressy was a 213.061, so he's about three tenths faster than him right now. And then uh, third place is about a half a second quicker than second place, you know. So, I mean, everybody's right there, even for these are road course numbers. I mean, for these, they, they kind of make sense, so to speak. I mean, one lap you might be a half a second faster than you were, and then second. Next lap, you might be a half a second slower because you miss a corner, miss, you miss your mark, you miss your acceleration point. Uh, your time will go down just that quickly. So, you know, these are really good variables here that we're watching all the rest of these guys go through. Well, and the biggest thing that we're going to sit here and fight, and I, I have no idea why my, all of this stuff is where it is. But in all honesty, this is one of the biggest things with a road race. We don't have the yellows, so the field isn't getting pulled back together to where if we look at all of the gaps, right now the gap back to second is 12 seconds. It's another six seconds back to third, 18 seconds back to fourth. To where there's not really much action out on track right now, and I think everybody has just reached the point. We've got three minutes left. Just accept your current position and just take the best that you can. Yeah, and I mean, on that note, I mean, you're going to have to be consistent. We got, you know, three minutes and six seconds left, and you have to be consistent. This isn't a time where you're trying to push. This is, you're not going to make up a, a spot here by you pushing. You're going to make a spot by up here at this point in the game or in the race it is by other people's mistakes. If they make a heavy mistake, run off the track, uh, spin out, whatever it is, it can happen an instant. The, the person in front of you does that. You just have to continue making your your uh, marks throughout these last three minutes. So you're not that guy losing spots and you're that guy hopefully gaining it if somebody else does. Well, and unfortunately a few people may not have had that same mentality earlier in the race and that was my entire thought process through this entire race before i jumped up here into the booth was if you can keep it on the track no spins you may not end up on the lead lap but as we look through the field 16th is the last position on the lead lap if you can keep yourself clean no incidents you're going to be in the top 20 and we had 40 people tonight which is um, any league that is predominantly oval this is a fantastic turnout for a road course exactly like uh, we said earlier in the broadcast having 40 people here start here on the road course is phenomenal you know every other every other league that we have that you know we we tend to go to a road course people shy away with it they don't want to learn it they don't want to do it they just want to stick to oval so they'll take either a provisional or just uh just not race that week so you know it, it's great to see that this league 
uh, is die hard and these guys are some of the best drivers out here trying to put down lap times to be competitive and having 40 people show up tonight. Well, and last night had a conversation with Blake Gordon, who's running in fourth and the AOLL ran Watkins Glen. Blake dominated. And at the end of the race, he said he is by far not going to be the best person out here. And I have to commend some of these guys. Not only are they fast on ovals and put me to shame, these guys, like, these Xfinity cars were not built for this track. They weren't built for road courses. And these guys are coming out in just stellar fashion, hitting all of their braking points. And this is just absolutely one of the best races. I kind of admit, I would have probably have had more fun up here because there was a lot of cursing in the closed circuit chat tonight. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's this one of those tracks. I mean, you take a car that's not really meant for it. It can be here, as you can see that uh, there's quite a few people gotten the hang of it. And, uh, you know, and not many people have any laps whatsoever, especially A, on the track and B, this car on this track. Well, and I'm looking right now. Time has expired as Riley Thompson is entering the last turn. And I'm not 100% positive. This is the last lap. He is going to go ahead and take the checkered flag in dominant fashion tonight as he's playing around a little bit right there. And that, I'm sorry, that is just a Stellar He's ride. drifting. Try to drift around turn one right there. No, this is that that's a stellar run that even as deep into his pit cycle, still running in the two thirteens, and this track chews tires and he's still faster than I could even achieve. Yeah, he, he his last lap was a two thirteen four fifty nine. His best lap of the race was a two ten two sixty four. So about halfway through his pit, uh, pit run, he was still putting down some fantastic laps. As we're just currently waiting for everyone to finish up their laps as he's taken a little bit of a victory spin around. And God, I have no idea how these guys figured it out. I probably should have spent more time practicing over the weekend, but unfortunately, I just downloaded the track this today. Uh, I mean, it's a wonderful track for a car, you know, go, go out there with a GT3 car, LMP, you know, take something like that to this track. Uh, that's what's meant the race here. <laughs> Not this Xfinity cars, but these guys here in the fuel league, they, uh, they decided to throw it on the on the calendar for this year and uh, the season two here, and it made it work. Uh, I know I know we're probably going to have some mixed feelings and reactions at the end of this race, but overall, I think you know it was a success uh, to be able to bring these cars here and get a 40 car field to go out there and run some really good laps tonight here for an hour and. We still are waiting to be able to have our results come up because not everyone has quite finished yet. Yeah, that's what and happens there when you we have, go. Uh, you got two and a half minute laps here. So, all right, let's go ahead and run through the finishing order really quickly. Riley Thompson was our winner as he's about to try to burn those tires down. Thomas Bressy in second, Justin Morton in third, Blake Gordon fourth, Alan Elwood in fifth, Eric Wineland in sixth, Tyler Hensley seventh, Ryan Bechtel in eighth, Michael Stroll ninth, Guile Brooks in tenth. Eleventh is Sean Carmody, twelfth is Casey Shue, thirteenth is Braxton Deweese, fourteenth is Shane Thurin, fifteenth uh, is Hayden Pastorius, uh, 16th is Brian Keita, 17th is Danny Ware, 18th is Brad Slaughter Jr., 19th is Kyle Cooper, and 20th is J.J. O'Dell. Sorry, I don't know why this just went as wide as it did. 21st is Brandon Bernhardt, 22nd is Christopher Matthews, 23rd, Jonathan Griven, 
24th Boomer Logan, 25th Carl Henderson, 26th Cal Filarski, 27th Don Runkle, 28th Travis McQuiston, 29th Zach Edwards, 30th is Norm Pelletier. 31st would be our guy right next to me, Josh Last, and 32nd is Delonte Ballard, 33rd is Nick Adams, 34th is Joe Densmore, 35th is Tyler Dugler, 36th is Blake Zidi, 37th is Matthew Rodriguez, 38th is Steve Rada, 39th is David Hendricks, or Davy Hendricks, and 40th is Cameron Hearn, our last week's winner, so he went from first to last. All Not right. the way he wanted it. So let's go ahead and bring our winner up and get his take on the whole ordeal tonight. One day I will actually learn what team everyone is on. Is Riley even in here? It does not look like our winner is actually in... Uh, Riley Thompson, if you're out there, if anybody has anything, have them join the waiting room. We'll pull him up afterwards. Until then, let's go ahead and bring our second place, uh, Thomas, number 24. Thomas Baresi. And uh, we may be striking out tonight. Oh. All righty. We'll go with third place, Justin Morton. Well, I think, like I said, I think we are actually striking out on just about everything tonight. Yeah, we, we're going to have to have I a guess word with everybody. <laughs> all right, we'll, we'll, we'll have to. All right, so if you guys are out there in the virtual world uh reach out to these top three have them come in there and until then let's bring in our the next pump we're going down we'll just keep going down the list we'll bring up blake gordon <laughs> hey blake it is adam and josh in the booth man you got a copy yes sir how's it going tonight man oh man it's going fantastic up here in this booth i don't know about you guys out there uh in uh racing land oh, there they are so they're all here now yes wow. Oh man! Well, well, we'll talk to you. I mean, uh, you had a heck of a race. Uh, looks like a little bit slick out there. Uh, what was your t your quick take on the track? Yeah, it was tough, man. Challenging. Uh, kudos to the admins for this group for uh, you know a thinking about putting Sebring on the schedule and b uh, listening to the feedback during the week when they uh, announced the short course because the full course, the international layout was definitely the way to go. It was. Uh, I think more about driving the racetrack tonight than racing anyone else. So just glad I kept it on track. Somehow finished that thing with zero incident points. It on paper says fourth, but it feels like a win to me. So I was just looking to, you know, hopefully get a top eight. Uh, I'll take a fourth. That's pretty awesome. Uh, best finish so far this year. So I will absolutely take it every day. Well, great Alrighty, run, man. sir. And hopefully we will chat with you at a later date up here, but we need to bring in our winner. Yeah, go talk to the real winners, guys. I'll talk to you later. Yep. Go yep, see ya. All right, we can get him up here, and in comes our winner. That's not the right person. That's Riley Thompson. How are you doing tonight, <laughs> man? It's Adam and Josh in the booth. How you get? You got a copy? Yep, feeling pretty good. Oh man, uh, dude, you put on a clinic tonight. Uh, what was your take on Sebring tonight here? It looks like you were the man to beat uh, from the get-go. Uh, besides it being the best track ever, uh, <laughs> I was surprised with how hot it was, especially in qualifying. Luckily, it came down, especially with how many clouds there were uh, towards the back half of the race. But overall, I mean, there were a couple like weird sectors with the car on this track, but it still like, felt right at home, so. I like it. I I truly I have to ask. Were you skeptical at all when they you saw Sebring? Because again, this is not a track meant for stock cars. Uh, actually, not at all. Because 
compared to going to the Rebel Ring, which I think will be interesting with how many kind of sweepers there are, uh, with the kind of cars that they have run here, and running uh, Camel with the Audi here before, it, as long as you could conserve the rears, they felt pretty good. No, this. Hey, man. Uh, yeah. Go what, ahead. what was your secret to uh, to to be able to manipulate the throttle to get the traction and get the launches off these corners like you did compared to everybody else? Uh, the main thing is, is you have to kind of treat it like that uh, stretch before the hairpin where it's still kind of curvy, where you can never really go full throttle even after a straight. Uh, unless you're trying to throw away your tires. So as long as you kind of top it out at a certain point, and then when it gets long, it stretches, that's when you can kind of lay the throttle on. You can never really go full throttle with how these tires are. Yeah, I was in probably the first two-thirds of the race before, you know, I decided to throw it away once or twice. It really, after, like, turn four... It was, it's one of those straights that, you know what, you want to go full throttle, there's no way, and with the exception of the front stretch and that last straightaway, there are no full throttle places in this entire track, in these cars. Yeah, and so the whole time you kind of have to, you just have to treat it like a corner exit, it's never really a straight unless it's, like you said, that back stretch on the front stretch. Alrighty, man. Hey, man. Uh, you like I said, man. You you led almost um, basically every single lap tonight. There was no since there was no qual cautions. Uh, you led every single lap from the get go. Got the pole. You did what you had to do to come out here. Uh, do you have any shout outs? Anybody out there watching or a team that you're on that you want to uh, give a shout out to? I uh, gotta thank Total Downforce. Uh, amazing team behind me and all these guys working with uh, JT and all those guys on top of it uh gotta thank black box for being on this car uh stroll for actually making it and you guys for broadcasting this no great dominant race from you tonight are we going to be seeing the same thing next week or is this a one-off for you uh i actually probably won't be racing this week with cars moving happening but I will see if I can get a wheel set up, and then hopefully after that, try and make some races. So we'll just have to see how all of that works out, I think. All right. No problem, man. Hey. Great chatting with you. You have a, you have a great evening, man. Uh, enjoy the wind. Thank you, guys. <laughs> all right. Well, let's uh, bring up Thomas Bressy, our second place winner, our runner up. Hey, Thomas, this is Josh and Adam in the booth. You got a copy? Yeah, I got you guys. Hey, man. Uh, glad to have you back up here in the booth. Uh, how was your race tonight there? Honestly, like, I'm, I'm happy with what it was considering how the season started. It's just been it's been a little difficult, to say the least, kind of getting things going. Um, I, was, I was looking forward to Sebring. Wasn't quite sure how it was going to play out. Fortunately, you know, had a good qualifying run, so it was ahead of some of the mess that kind of, I guess, was inevitable to a point on the first lap and kind of able to do what I needed to do and just kind of run my own pace. I wish I had a little bit more. I just, I couldn't, I had trouble with the rear tires, I think, and Riley was doing a better job of managing that. So um, congrats to him. He drove a really good race. I just, I didn't have anything for him. I don't really think any of us did. He was kind of lights out through practice and everything else. So um i'm just happy that you know didn't end up in a wadded mess and didn't feel like i was you know missing something complete i mean i guess maybe to a point compared to riley i probably was but i still think you know overall it was a good night so what are your thoughts on bringing these stock cars to something that's more meant for gt3s and indy cars I mean, honestly, I loved it. I thought it was a really cool challenge. And I, th I remember a couple of years ago, I was just, I got bored one night and I was like, I'm going to take a cup car to Sebring, just see what happens. And I was like, honestly, this isn't bad. Horsepower is a little much. Let's try like the Xfinity car or something. And 
it was actually kind of fun combo. Now, granted, I was stupid and did it at night, so there's no light, so it was even more terrifying, but that was just for, you know, for funsies, I guess. But um, it, I thought it was fun. I, I thought the setup was good. We ended up doing the Montreal setup, and I thought it, it worked pretty well here. It was, you definitely had to drive it differently and be conscious of the kind of car you were driving compared to something else, as you said, like a GT car or prototype or whatever else that normally would run here. But it was a nice change of pace. And I think kind of fits, you know, fits the theme of the road courses for this season. Um, you know, obviously the next one we have, we're going to Austria. So I think that's going to be a really fun race. Um, probably not as challenging of a track for, for most people, which, you know, is always a good thing to keep the racing tight. But, um, and then we got, you know, road Atlanta later in the year too. So, um, but it was a nice change. It was different than, you know, going to Watkins Glen or Sonoma, which everyone does. And I mean, we've, we've done that too. So, um, no complaints out of me. I would love to do it again next year if we if we're able to. Honestly, I I I'm actually looking forward to the Red Bull Ring for one simple reason is 4, 5 and 6 are all massively off camber turns and I can't wait to see how terribly these cars handle it and have a lot of fun trying to manage <laughs> it. Oh yeah. It's going to be, it's going to be, that's probably of the ones that I'm, that we have left in terms of road courses. I think I'm like cautiously excited for it, mostly just because I'm very eager to see how it's going to play out. Um, but I'm definitely looking forward to Road Atlanta as well. I think that's kind of like a bigger Canadian tire in a way, similar, like, you know, the sweeping first corner, sort of technical first sector, the double apex onto a long back stretch, couple corners right at the end, and then you're back to the start finish line. So um, I'm looking forward to that one as well. But um, yeah, Red Bull Ring's definitely going to be a lot of fun. It's definitely going to be a, another unique challenge. So next week, we are off to USA, the first <laughs> short track. Uh, <laughs> that's. 40. uh any plus cars at USA. What could, in the words of Jeremy Clarkson, what could possibly go wrong? Um, I still have flashbacks from when we were there last time and we had a late restart and I think I was running like fourth or fifth and the top two got together off of two and huge junk. So um, I wouldn't be the least bit surprised if it happens again, but um, yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it'll be great. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I'm scared. <laughs> I think we all secretly are. It's going to be a, uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Those, um, those real small, like short tracks, like USA, North Wilkesboro, stuff like that are always very interesting races for us. So, um, it's going to be, it could be, it could, it could be, be shake up. You could be racing Concord or something like that. <laughs> Don't. Yeah. We, uh, we did that in our off season, uh, Concord was series, an absolute and it was... blast with this group, in my opinion. It was it was something that's that's for sure. But uh, yeah, at least it's not Concord. But yeah, those short tracks are always kind of an interesting twist uh, to kind of throw in on the calendar. And we have a couple of them this year. So it'll be, uh, you know, I'm sure that's going to jumble the points up again as, uh, you know, the schedule seems to do this far. I mean, we've only we've had, what, one mile and a half and the rest have been kind of all over the place. We had a new road course. We got a short track that doesn't exist anymore. And we had a plate track. So. And uh, it's a good, good mix, but that's kind of what feels about good, you know, spread of tracks gives a lot of people an opportunity to kind of show what they're able to do and, you know, keeps things exciting. I will I got say you, man. great to chat with you again. And, well, I'm just going to say good luck next week. I, yeah, I think we're all going to need it. I appreciate it, guys. Have a good one, man. Yeah. See you guys. And for some reason, Adam Wood decided to move himself down into the waiting room rather than Mr. I was trying Perez. to <laughs> him down, and he jumped out as I was clicking on his name. Then it made me click on my name. All right, I, let's go know. ahead and get Justin in here. I... All right. Hey, Justin, this is uh, Adam and Josh in a booth. You get a copy? Hey, man, uh, thanks for waiting around, man. We want to hear your take on your wonderful third-place finish tonight. Tell us about the track and uh, all the all the good and bad stuff about it. Yeah, um, I was expecting this track to be pretty fun in these cars. Um, it would be really great to see NASCAR actually run this. I had a blast. Um, 
that start was a bit chaotic there with Allen going off. It looked like he was going to rejoin right in front of me, and I jumped on the brakes to not get into him. And fortunately, I think that led to a bigger incident because it looked like he was going to be able to hold it into the dirt. So uh, that kind of sucked. Um, but as, as someone that was that. in the back of that, yes, that was chaos. Yeah, I mean, from my angle, it looked like he was going to rejoin the track, and so I got on the brakes to avoid him, and it, it happened. Definitely wasn't intentional or anything. Um, a few laps later, Stroll got in the back of me, missing a turn. So I had, like, 40 seconds of damage when I checked in the pits. But, uh, but yeah, just trying to tick laps. I got to the back of Thomas at one point right before the pits. Um, I think going that one extra lap kind of hurt me in the end. If I came in right behind him, I might have had a chance at him, but uh, that's how it goes. No worries, man. But I, I mean, you look strong on that. You had a you know initial few laps there. Uh, you and Blake Gordon were, I mean, swapping positions left and right there. Uh, looks like a really good battle between you guys, and you're finally able to clear him and kind of set sail. And then, yeah, like you said, we saw you like catch the back bumper of Thomas, and he pitted. And then you went out there, and I think he that that two second gap that he got right there on that one pit stop, uh, kind of set you back from there on. Yeah, I think at at the exiting the pits, I think I was about six seconds back, but I was also behind some lap traffic, so that probably played some of into that. Um, yeah, if I think I came in behind him, it would have been a lot better. Gotcha. So. Uh... And so far, everybody's seemed to be very positive about taking uh, this Xfinity car here to uh, Sebring, and they want to put it back on the schedule for next year. So uh, yeah, if the admins out there listening to it, uh, that's what the top drivers are saying, but these are the top drivers who love the track. I uh, wish we could talk to all the drivers and see what the, you know, the 27th place guy has to say about it, <laughs> this racetrack tonight. I'll tell you what 30th says about it. Please no. <laughs> Yeah, at the end of the day, they have taken the opinion of uh, all the drivers. I love running these cars on every course, so uh, I'd be uh, I'd enjoy coming back. But if we go to another road course that's new, I'd be all for it. So next week we're off to USA. How are you feeling going into the first short track of the season? I feel uh, short tracks are probably my stronger side of racing. I run. Uh, I've run short tracks for Saturday nights the past two years on iRacing consistently, so I feel like that's probably where my stronger side's going to be. Um, USA is kind of a weird one to me. I've not been a huge fan of it, but I've always had good results there. Um, hopefully, I'll pull out another good result like this one. I mean, oh, if... we hope for, we hope for you uh, do. We love having you up here in the booth, man, and. Uh... Like you said, USA International is going to be a challenging short track race, especially if we get 40-plus drivers out there that uh, to come out there next week. For cars out there will be a lot. Uh, should be still a good race, though. Is there anybody you want to give a shout-out to while you're here? Oh, yeah, I'd like to thank my team. Uh, Toll Down Force Racing, a great group of guys. No, Hayden didn't have the best races, but um, those things just kind of happen. Um, Pixel Dust for the awesome paint. Cargamel. Oh, sorry. <laughs> thinking of the wrong thing. Um, thank you guys for doing the amazing broadcast. Now, great run tonight. Hopefully we'll get to chat with you a bit more throughout the season. But enjoy this one, and hopefully we'll chat with you next week. If you're really that confident in short tracks, I'm sure we'll get to chat with you. Yeah, hopefully I get back into a podium for next week. Sounds right. good, man. Well, uh, uh, congratulations on your third place finish, man, and hopefully you have a r good rest of the week. Thank you. All righty, man. Hey, uh, appreciate you jumping up. Uh, Larry kept getting booted from iRacing service and uh, kept disconnecting him. So uh, we apologize for all of the technical difficulties that went on tonight. Uh, it's a... Uh, Unfortunately, it looked like it was kind of out of our control here. It looked like iRacing had a vendetta against our broadcaster, Larry Patrick. But uh, he was able, Josh was able to step up, come back in. We appreciate you, man. Uh, and uh, that's 
we have a wonderful ghost fire media team that you know will do anything for each other to uh step in if joshua exit a race he was not enjoying at all to come up here and sit in the booth i'm not saying i wasn't it. enjoying it it was a I, I will admit it was a fun challenge i actually would not mind coming back here i just would put more practice time in than i did this week yeah yeah, the seat time is uh, kind of key on a track that you've never ran and in a car that you've kind of never ran in either. No, but again, it, it's a great league to broadcast. These guys are utterly fantastic. But let's take a quick run through the schedule we have for the rest of the week. So, so tom go ahead. tomorrow night we are going to be and broadcasting IVRL. They are going to be racing the MD Oval. They're contemplating what they're going to do, but it looks like they've settled on uh, going with the MD Oval. On Thursday night, we'll be at TNT. Where are we racing at in TNT on we Thursday night? We will be night? at the Charlotte Oval after running the Roval yeah. last week. Back to back, Charlotte. You didn't gotta drive that far for the TNT series. You just gotta leave your camper out in the infield for the week. Yeah, I'll have a great time. And then this Sunday, I am unfamiliar where they're gonna be racing at the AOL will, Cup Series. The AOL Cup Series will be at the Indy Oval as well. Indy Oval. So we got two racing at Indy Oval. And then the uh, only thing I forgot to mention is Friday night. Come out, check out our podcast this Friday night. You'll get a rundown of all the races that happened this week. We'll get to learn about some new drivers and some old drivers coming in. So please check us out on Friday night. And uh, ensure that you subscribe to us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. Uh, so every time we go live, uh, you and your friends and family can watch you. You can go back and watch yourself race these races. It's always fun. I always go back and watch every race I broadcast and every race that I race just to see, you know, how did I do? How did the competition do? Learn their lines. Learn, uh, you know, hopefully it's not better than mine. But uh, you know, go out there and do that. Um, but until then, I am Adam Wood. This is Josh Last, and we are Ghostfire Media. You guys have a good night. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for watching iRacing on the Ghostfire Media Network.